I'm Tom from Do-It-Yourself Home Automation, and if you use the Fitbit app, you may have seen they've started to include a new sleep score metric, in addition to the information about how well you slept the night before. So um, you can go down here in the Fitbit app, and you can see if you go into sleep, um, you get the same data you used to get with the number of hours that you slept, and you can drill down into the sleep stages. But they're also now giving you this single number metric from 0 to 100 rating the quality of your sleep. And you can see it varies a lot day to day. Um, it's it's a, a lot of different factors going into it. So <laughs> you can see today I got a 68, which is fair. Um, I slept five hours and 30 minutes. On Saturday though, I only slept about four hours and 58 minutes, but I actually got an 81 sleep score. So the sleep score is not you know, necessarily only looking at the amount of time that you slept. It's giving you an overall metric that summarizes a lot of different information that your Fitbit is gathering about your sleep. Um, and as of when this was introduced in August of late August of 2019, um, they haven't yet rolled out the service they're probably going to be wrapping around this, which is Fitbit Premium. It's been announced, but it hasn't been rolled out yet. So they've just given us the sleep score um, and not a, a lot of information on what goes into it or a lot of ability to drill down into it. So if I go in right now, I just see my sleep score. It's very good, actually. I found it's very accurate um, and a good reflection of how I actually feel the next day, but there's not a lot of information on what goes into it. Um, however, I was actually invited, and I've showed this in other videos, to do a beta test of the sleep score feature about a year ago uh, when they were initially starting to test it out. And um, I, I loved it at the time. They basically did this beta, closed beta, then they shut down the sleep score uh, service for a while. And now I'm really happy to see they've rolled it out again. And they're probably, again, going to be building it into the Fitbit Premium offering. Um, but, you know, what goes into that score? I think some of the data that I learned and information I learned in the beta uh, is really helpful to start to understand, you know, what uh, determines your sleep score. So there's three factors um, that they highlighted, at least in the beta. And the three factors are sleep duration, sleep depth, and a uh, kind of nebulous idea they call revitalization. So sleep duration um, definitely, you know, makes sense. It's the amount of time that you spent asleep. Um, and generally speaking, you know, the right amount of sleep, you want to sleep more rather than less. You don't want to sleep too much. Probably you don't want to sleep more than nine hours a day, for example. Um, and it also looks at your, your wake and, uh, and sleep times. So trying to get that consistent. And those are the, the data that go into sleep duration. But overall, I think that's a pretty straightforward metric. Um, you can, you know, pretty clearly understand how that's uh, looking at just how much time you spend to sleep. Um, also, that'll probably look at how often you wake in the night. Uh, if you're waking up a lot in the night, you're going to have a less restorative sleep. Uh, the second factor that went into it is sleep depth. Um, and that's looking at the stages of sleep. So this is where Fitbit starts to use some of their proprietary technologies. They're looking at how much time you spend in REM sleep versus how much time you spend in deep sleep or light sleep. Um, it's not necessarily that one is better than the other. They just serve different functions. Um, so, you know, deep sleep is more restorative in theory for the body. REM sleep is when you're dreaming and it's probably helping to consolidate information and make you feel more mentally rested the next day, but actually higher REM sleep can be associated with things like depression. So there's a lot of different complexity going into that. Um, so they're, they're looking at sleep depth and probably a lot of different factors in sleep depth to try to determine how deeply you slept, not just how long. Because they, they would say probably that it's better to have a shorter, deeper, more restorative sleep and to have a longer sleep where, um, you know, you're not sleeping as deeply and not sleeping as well. So that's the second factor. And then the third one, I think, is probably the most interesting. It's called revitalization. Um, and this is sort of a summary of, uh, they, they don't say exactly what it's uh, looking at, but it was sleep, um, you know, breathing differences, uh, heart rates during sleep compared to your daytime heart rates. Um, and I'm guessing, they don't say this outright anywhere, but I'm guessing this is where they bring the pulse oximeter that they have in the watch. Um, there's a, a hardware post uh, pulse oximeter in the watch, and it's not actually shown anywhere in your data. You can't read your um, SpO2 rating or anything, but it's looking at how much oxygen is in your blood. Um, and I think Fitbit will eventually show that data. They'll probably use it to target sleep apnea. But in the meantime, I think they're probably working it into this revitalization metric. Um, and, you know, again, differences in your heart rate when you're asleep versus your daytime resting heart rate. So these are getting really into some pretty proprietary functions of Fitbit, 
but um, that's the revitalization score. And uh, in the beta, they broke these three out into separate categories. So you could get your overall sleep score for the night and then a separate score for each of sleep duration, sleep depth, and revitalization. Um, my guess is when they roll out premium, they're probably gonna have that same breakdown where you can see that and you'll have to pay a little bit more to do it, but you know, you'll know you get more data than just this single metric sleep score like we have right now. Um, they may even build in other kinds of uh, data into it, but you know it's a pretty nuanced uh, number at this point. You get a zero to 100 summary of how good your sleep was, but it's looking at the amount of time you spent to sleep, how often you woke, um, the time you went to sleep, the time you woke up. It's probably comparing across uh, metrics for your age and gender as well. Um, then for sleep duration, you're looking at the different sleep depth, rather, you're looking at the stages of sleep, you, how much time you spent in each one, how deep the sleep was. And then it's even probably, I'm guessing, looking at your blood oxygen levels um, and your heart rate and comparing that to your baseline heart rate and other kinds of things to see you know, how, <coughs> how revitalized you'll feel in the morning. Um, so a lot of data going into that one metric. And again, I'm hoping when they roll out premium that they're going to uh, break it down, probably provide recommendations for how to improve each of those submetrics. Maybe they'll introduce more beyond the original three. I really look forward to seeing that. But in the meantime, that's a general sense for how they're coming up with that number. And again, I find it works really well. I think it's a great summary um, of how I feel the next day. Um, and it's great to see, you know, even if you don't sleep that much, like four hours and 58 minutes on Saturday, I actually got a pretty good sleep, an 81 score. So, you know, it's, you don't have to feel guilty about not sleeping uh, the amount you recommended. Uh, and, you know, I did feel pretty good that day. So uh, if you found this helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps. And uh, stay tuned. As soon as they roll out premium, I'm going to start testing it. And we'll see more about what goes into this uh, sleep score number.